Because the devil has figured out that if he can create certain pathways in the minds of children and the young people, when they become men and women in their homes, they will make decisions based on those pathways. If he can get and organize someone to abuse that child, if he can organize a father to be uh, abusive to that child, if he can organize somebody to be racist to that child, and if this keeps on happening and the child keeps on thinking about what is happening, a pathway is being created. Mindset, mind renewed. Let us turn together to Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. There's a scripture that I'm sure you are very familiar with. We're just going to go through it again and, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak. Please don't see me as the person that is speaking in front of you. I'm just being used as a vessel. And I'm also looking forward to what the Lord is saying to us today. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. The Bible says, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Hallelujah. Can we say it together? Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Now let us receive this word and let us say this. I set my mind on things above, not on things on earth. Hallelujah. This is a fundamental pillar of our walk with God, of our Christian walk and our walk of victory. We begin from a place of victory. I was privileged and I loved it. I was so, uh, we went back, it was nostalgic. We had the youth at our house on Friday. It, you know, it reminded us of, of the days where we would have the youth in our house and it was so wonderful and the atmosphere was just beautiful. Then we had an older youth come to invade us, Nina. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, she's one of them anyway, aren't you? <laughs> yes, and um, we were talking about um, a similar kind of theme. Setting your mind on things above. And I was saying to them that we begin our walk of faith from a position of victory. We were talking about holiness. We begin our walk from a position of victory. But then the Bible tells us about us working and staying in the presence of God. And Jesus gives us all these things and the word of God tells us what we need to do to maintain and to stay in a place of victory. And one of the places is what the apostle says to the Colossians, set your mind on things above and not on things on earth. Set, what do we understand by set? We go to the dictionary and it gives us three verbs of set as a verb. It says that it means to position to put something in a particular place or position. Another way that the Bible, that the dictionary explains set as a verb is to condition. To cause something or someone to be in the stated condition or situation. Another way that it describes the verb set is to establish. It is to establish, to decide something. Hallelujah. So to position, to condition, to establish. That is what to set means. So when he says to us, set your mind on things above, the Bible is saying to you that you've got to position your mind and your thinking on things that are above and ignore the things that are down here. It means that you have to condition the way in which you think and the way in which your mind operates because 
You know, the Bible calls it the heart. It says that out of that flows the things of life. And he's saying that when you set or you condition or you establish your mind and your thought patterns and the way in which you think, which is where your reactions and other things come from, he's saying that you are going to maintain a position of victory. But he's saying that if you set your mind on things that are down here, the things of the earth, you will find no victory there. If your mindset is tuned to the way in which things are done here on earth, you will not receive your victory. Then I go back to Colossians chapter 3 and I start reading it again. Verse 2. And I read it like this. Position your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Condition your mind on things above, not things on earth. Establish your mind on things above, not things on earth. Everybody in this room, we have the children here today, from the youngest one to the oldest person in this room, everybody is going through something. You are going through something that you are trying to work through. I won't even say if this is true, put your hand up because everybody is going through something. Everyone is having to make a decision about some small things or about big things. Where you're sat right now, there are decisions that you have to make. As a father, you made some decisions and you are perhaps contemplating about certain decisions you need to make to better your family or to better your your home as a mother you're observing your children you're observing your your husband and you're having to make decisions about the way you do things or the way things are done in a home as a child you are making decisions sister Tamara said that the Lord directed her to what she needs to, to study she heard from God and she had to make decisions as to what she needs to do Everybody is going through something that requires a reaction. When you woke up this morning, I don't know whether you came alone or whether you were in a home, you faced situations that required a reaction. Maybe somebody said something to you, one of your family members. Maybe it was fighting over the iron box. Maybe it was milk that had not been bought. And there are little things that required a reaction. Even right now, as I speak, your mind is processing and it is waiting to know what it, how do I react to the words that are being spoken? Do I, do I agree with them? Are they, are they speaking to me? Is, is it, what does it mean for me? Everyone is dealing or going through a situation that requires a plan, that requires adjustment. I don't know what yours is, maybe it's a diagnosis, Maybe we don't know about it. Maybe you've been going to the, to the doctors. You haven't informed us because it is something that, you know, is, is maybe worrying you or it's something that you are believing in faith. You say nothing will come of it. You're having tests and tests and tests. There is the cloud of, of a diagnosis. No, that, that, is, uh, that is something that is happening in the room. Somebody is going through tests here and you are worried and the Lord wants you to listen to this word and let us pray for you let us pray for you hallelujah because the, the, the worry is almost in itself is a sickness the Lord is saying to you right now that the, 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 the fear and the anxiety you have in itself may catalyze things inside of your body that don't need to be catalyzed Listen to what the Lord is saying. We need to pray. Fear is the greatest disease. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and maybe you are facing a bill that you didn't expect. And there is something that you, 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 your mind must do something. You must figure out what needs to be done. 
with this bill. Maybe it's a tax bill. Maybe it's, a, it's, it's, it's your utility bills. Maybe you've put your head in the sand and you haven't been giving them your readings and you keep hearing on the, on the radio that prices and you just, you just switched off and you say, I'll deal with it. Now that bill has come, it's a thousand plus and you don't know what to do and your mind must figure it out. I'm setting the scenario to understand what God is trying to say to us. Maybe it is marriage and perhaps your marriage hasn't quite turned out how you thought it would. Maybe you are excited when you got married and your, the idea of the husband you thought or the wife you thought has not quite materialized. It's a different picture than what you saw in the, in, in, in the window. When you are courting, you saw a different picture. You went into the shop, you made the purchase, you said your vows, and perhaps now you are, you are finding that it's, it's different. Your mind needs to react to it, needs to do something about it. Maybe it is children that you are trying to control, you are having difficulty with a child, or your children, they're not quite hearing you the way they used to. Something flicked. <laughs> you, you are their hero. You are, you are his hero. And now your words seem to be rejected every time you speak. And your mind needs to sort it out. These are things that the Lord was downloading into my spirit. That's why I'm going through these examples. They're not just examples. It's happening here. Maybe it is something that is going on in your head. Thoughts that you can't seem to shake off. You know that shouldn't be happening, you know you shouldn't be having those thoughts in your head. But they are there. And now it is causing you distress and you can't sleep. And it is affecting your relationships. Maybe it's a situation that has deeply disappointed you. That it is now taking over your life and it is affecting your life. These are things that you must deal with. And the Lord is saying that, wow, I understand and I see that you carry a burden. How are you going to go through them? With what mindset? God is saying to somebody here that I have a solution for every single problem you are facing in your life. There is no single problem from what I've mentioned and others that he's saying to you, I don't have an answer for. But what he's saying is that it all depends on what you have set your mind to. Because the answers are in the high place. He's saying that I have prepared an answer and I have put it above. You will never see it as long as you are looking here, down here. That's what he's saying to you. I don't know how disappointed or how you are on the, on the edge of your tether and you feel that, God, where are you? I don't know. I'm praying. I'm getting frustrated. And he's saying to you, the moment you prayed your first prayer, the answer was released. You remember what happened to Daniel. God released an answer. But it was held up. And he set his mind on the things that are above. He stopped eating. He stopped eating. He went into a time of prayer and fasting. For 21 days he fought. Daniel could have just set his eyes and his mind on the things of the world and say, well, it is what it is. I am in this problem. I will live with it. Imagine, one day passes, two days passes, the answer is up there. It's requiring him to set his mind on the things above and to go to war. Because what are the things above are the things where God is saying that I know what I have said to Peter is what I say to you. He said to him that I have given you the keys. Listen to what he said to Peter. He said, the keys of the kingdom of heaven the things that are above. He says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. 
and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. He is giving you the same thing. He is saying that the solution is there, but where is your mindset? And I want us to just look at what mindset means from even just what the world says and what those who are learned says. Hallelujah. How do we position our mind? How do we condition and establish our mind? Since Sherwin is not here, I would have looked to her for, for, um, for approval <laughs> from what I'm about to read is something that is in her field. I believe, Sister Selena, you probably would know this as well. I'll read something that I read. This is what science says about the mind. Sister Selena, just tell me if it's wrong, don't shake your head because that will throw me off. You will tell me later. This is what scientists say. They say that when you have a thought, when you have a thought in your head, an electrical signal passes back and forth between various neurons responsible for that thought. The brain is always trying to become more efficient. So every time two cells communicate, the brain builds a connection that makes it easier for them to do so in the future. While this is good, because it develops our knowledge network and ability to react or respond to something quickly, at times this can also have its downside. I'll pause there for a second. So the scientists are saying that when you are thinking or when you face a problem, when you are trying to think, electrical signals are passing. There is things going on in your brain. And the way God created us is the brain is trying to be as efficient as it can. And it is looking to create connections that it can rely on in the future. That is my interpretation. And the scientist is saying that wow, this is good because it means that not every time you, you face a problem, so for example, my brain has all already established in this room that there is, there is a step here, okay? The first time that we put this step in the, in the building, as I was walking, my brain was doing the calculations, neurons, and it says, right, there's a step, foot forward, step down, okay? Do you know that I've got to a place now where I can just be talking to Brother Ross and I just walk the stage because my brain already knows the distance and that we're gonna do what we do. It's not calculating, it has created a pathway. Something has already been established in my mind that there is a danger here I could break my leg but I don't have to compute it all the time something has already been established in your mind we'll get to it about how you deal with situations it is from what you have learned and what you've seen I'll continue the scientist says when we think or experience the same thought or situation over and over again, the connection that has been formed between certain cells becomes more established and therefore more prevalent. This of it is like a shortcut that has been worn into the grass by numerous walkers who decided not to stick to the longer pathway. Have you been to places like this? Where there is like grass or maybe in your garden, maybe you, you can't be bothered to use the, the, the slabs that you put in place. You keep on going, pew, cutting across your, 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 your lawn. And now you are starting to see that the grass is dying. There's a path that is being created, right? It is because it is being used over and over again. They continue, they say, unless you make a conscious decision to stick to the pathway, you will always take the shortcut because it will get you to the destination more quickly. This can result in rigid thinking. When you've told yourself or been told something for so long that a thought pattern becomes so firmly established, you find it hard to think or see things in any other direction. Unfortunately, this is particularly harmful if the thought is a negative one. Luckily, research has shown, <laughs> research, I tell them the word of God has told us this, but let them call it research. Research has shown that throughout life, the connections between neurons are continuously growing and changing. This is referred to as neuroplasticity. When you practice learning or thinking in new ways, 
you create new pathways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give my wife the credit for finding this, this, this research. Um, I saw it, she showed it to me, and I said, wow, this is what the Lord's been speaking to me. And I said, I will grab it, and I can't quote who it's from, but it's from, 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 from a scientist somewhere. Now, as I was reading this, I said, so Lord, this is how you've created us. And now I understand what you are saying, that it can even be measured, it can be observed scientifically. They are saying that there are certain things that you have thought and you've thought the thoughts over and over again or things that you've been told, situations you've been through that affect the way that you are going to do and make decisions in the future. Now you understand why at Fountain Church we have said we will spare no cost at investing in our children and our youth. Because the devil has figured out that if he can create certain pathways in the minds of children and the young people, when they become men and women in their homes, they will make decisions based on those pathways. If he can get and organize someone to abuse that child, if he can organize a father to be uh, abusive to that child, if he can organize somebody to be racist to that child, and if this keeps on happening and the child keeps on thinking, about what is happening, a pathway is being created. And he is saying that the enemy's plan is that when you are now facing situations as a grown man, a grown woman, you are now making decisions on a mindset that has been created by the lies of the enemy in your life. But the good news is, even the scientists say it, that it is not too late. And this is what the Bible talks about mindset and changing the mindset is what it calls about renewal of the mind. Hallelujah. The Bible is warning us about patterns of thinking. You know, these scientists that I've just read from, quoted from, of course, they say that this is a good thing sometimes. I've just established and explained how some of these things in our mind, in our, in our brain, they help us to stay safe. But what they probably do not understand that the scripture tells us is that patterns are dangerous, especially if they are patterns of this world. The Bible says in Romans 12, you could probably recite this without opening your, your Bible. It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Why is the Bible warning us against this? He's saying, don't keep on indulging yourself and reacting in the same way that the world is reacting because a pattern is being formed in your mind as you see it out there. Pathways are being formed, he's saying to the young people, don't keep on watching things that are educating you about relationships because when you get into your own, you'll be relying on what you saw on the sitcoms and on, on Instagram and on Love Island and other these things and you will find that you are leading a life of destruction. You say, I'm just watching, Pastor. Stop being over the top. The Bible is saying that if you keep on looking and consuming and involving yourself in the patterns of this world, a pattern is being formed and now you are going to be doing things that are written even in the way that your brain processes things. You are responding in ways of the world. He says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is a must. Because he knows that we are living in a world which is, which, which, which is fallen. We are living in a world which, is, which has normalized things that God the creator says is not normal. But he has, it's been normalized. And he, he, he has lied to you that it doesn't matter. You are, not, you are just a little bit touching. But all it takes is for somebody to walk across a path of, of, of loan. You look and there is no difference. And somebody else discovers that there is also this shortcut. And you look, you know, you will never see the change. It is so gradual that you don't see it. 
It is not that you wake up one morning and there is, there, there is, there is, there is dead, dead lawn on, in, in the middle of your garden. It is because the behavior in your family as you use the garden, you have stopped and refused to use the paves, the paving slabs that you put. You have refused to go the long way, the difficult way. You want to keep on cutting there. And slowly and slowly there is death. And there is a path. And it is easier. It is easier. And this is what is happening in this world. He's saying that be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God is saying that there is my perfect will that I have for you. He's saying that I've got a solution for you already. The problems that you are facing, I've got a solution for you already. But he is saying that you have to prove my will in your life. And the way that you prove my good and acceptable perfect will it is by having your mind renewed hallelujah it is by having it washed in the word of god this is a revelation to me i don't know if you're catching it because i'm now saying to myself that i'm going to be watching everything that i'm doing to make sure i'm not creating patterns and this is what the Bible is saying to me. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. The word conform that is used there is the Greek word metamorpho. And what metamorpho means is to change into another form. You know about metamorphosis, right? It's, what's, it's used in science. Metamorpho is, it is, it is, it is a, a, a transformation. The enemy has stolen the process of God and he uses it in the kingdom. There is a transformation into death. And the reason why many people do not run away from sin is because they do something and they don't see change. They don't see change. It is like if you have a child, it is only we who don't live with your child that come and say to you, wow, this child is growing. But for you, it is such a slow process that you don't ever say, wow, I've just seen him grow. <laughs> the kid is in your arms. It is a gradual process. I come to your house after one month, after one year, say, that child has grown. You say, oh, has he? It has been a very slow process. And this is what metamorpho means. It is a slow change. You may have been metamorphosed into a very angry person maybe a very downcast person, maybe your reactions, you're finding yourself, you're, react, you're reacting in your home to your husband, to your wife, to your sister, to your brother, to your friends in such a negative way. You say, when did this happen? I used to be a joyful, soft-spoken person. Why is it that I'm now responding in such, in, in, in such rough language and behavior? There was a metamorpho that has taken place. It's been a slow process. Sometimes when you're convicted by the Holy Spirit, He takes you back to the days when you used to think that certain things were not even anywhere. You could not touch them. And now you are knee deep into them. You say, how did this happen? It's like the prodigal son finds himself knee deep into a pigsty eating with pigs when he was once an heir when he was once a child of a rich man this metamorpho it happens because we are setting our mind on the things that are down here but there is hope my brethren hallelujah there is hope and this is a message of hope that god is saying that it is time for you to decide where you're setting your mind. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying to somebody here today, that there is no shortcut There is no shortcut 
to you receiving the answer to the prayer that prayer that deep prayer that you've been praying for that is to do with what is going on inside of your life listen to this very carefully the Lord is saying that there is no shortcut but a transformation of your mind and he's saying to somebody here that it begins today with you making a decision to completely align your life with what God wants to speak to you. He is saying to somebody here today that I have been waiting for you to discover the answer and the solution, but you are nowhere to be found. Yes, you are in the church, but I can't seem to get a personal time with you. You are reading Cosmopolitan and Hello and OK. I don't know if they still exist. You are on Instagram. You are everywhere. But I can't seem to find you in my word. When it is announced on Sunday that we are on week so and so, it has now become a song that you don't even it, it doesn't even, it, it, there's no reaction. There's a time where there was a reaction. Say, I, I, I'm, I'm not doing it. But now that has even died. You are waiting, say, they're going to say what week we are on. Oh, they've said it. And God is saying that I've been waiting for you eagerly to present a solution to your problem, to your anxiety, to your body image issues, to your eating disorder. You are fighting a battle that can only be won through the transformation of your mind. Because you are setting your eyes on the things here on earth. And you are try, your mind is, is dealing with things according to the way that the enemy has exactly planned out that you should be responding. And you are finding that the solutions are not coming, but it is getting worse. He is saying to you that set your mind on the things above. When it comes to your finances, he is saying, don't plan according to the pattern of this world. Don't plan according to the things that you see. Set your eyes and your mind on the things above. When it comes to your marriage, he is saying, yes, I know you've looked left, right, but set your mind on the things above. What is God saying that needs to be done in this situation? He is saying that there is something that he has given you and he's given you the keys. You will unlock. Hallelujah. You will unlock. Do you know, I'll finish on this point. I'm cutting it short because we need to baptize our brethren. Do you know that everything has a spiritual force behind it? Could you check with your neighbor if they knew it? Ask them. Did you know? Ask them. Ask. Ask. Did you know that everything has a spiritual force behind it? Someone didn't ask Vimbai. Did you ask her, Auntie Saru? What did she say? She knew it. Did you know that everything has a spiritual force? The things that you are seeing that are manifesting in your home, there is a spiritual force behind them. If you are struggling with something even in, in, in your mind, whether it is an eating disorder, whether it is, it, it, it has a spiritual force. If you are struggling with discipline, maybe you've been trying to go to the gym or to eat well or to change your diet. There are some brethren here who have been trying to become vegetarians and, 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 and vegans. <laughs> Do you know that the failure to do that may be that there is a spiritual thing behind it? Because you as a free being, if you have decided to do something, you should be able to do it. If you have decided to do something, you should be able to do it. If you are struggling, there is a spiritual force behind it. 
if you are struggling with self-control with addiction there is a spiritual force behind it when god says do not look at do not set your mind here he is saying stop looking at the manifestation you will keep on fighting with manifestations and ignoring the source a clinician worth their education will know that it is better to deal with the source of something with the cause of something rather than to keep on medicating the symptoms am i right we have clinicians here isn't it better if you are able to find the source to deal with the source or would you rather just keep people medication for life every day you are popping paracetamols and ibuprofen and now you, you are an expert in painkillers why not find out where that pain is coming from what is causing that pain there must be something it is not normal for you to have a diet every day of paracetamol and morphine and, and cocardamol and whatever else something clearly is wrong somewhere if you are in the middle of a situation in your family in your finances and you are always taking loans and you are borrowing here to pay there you are doing this you are that you are always going for you know you're always arguing with your wife with your husband with your children you can't seem to have any joy in your life people speak to you take offense just like that you are so offended every time it is eating that's not you, you keep on saying okay i'll watch a film i'll watch netflix i'll eat some ice cream i'll feel better i will take myself out i'll drink a little bit of cognac you are medicating symptoms god is saying to you that there is a a problem it is spiritual set your mind on things above god will show you what it is god will reveal it to you and you can go there and nip it in the bud those of you who may have been involved in deliverance ministry it seems so simple sometimes dealing with very big things someone is struggling we had somebody here we prayed deliverance for him after striva we finished at 5 a.m in the morning we met him on the street he said i've been under this torment for 20 years plus and he said i thank god for meeting you guys we spent three hours dealing with 20 year problem you may say it's, it's it, that's too simplistic pastor no we were here praying and the lord was just showing us the lord was just showing us go there touch that one burn that one there are things in your life that you will not solve until you stop setting your eyes on the things that are here on earth and you set your things your eyes and your mind on the things that are heaven bound hallelujah and it is as simple as that god loves us so much and he has not complicated his process that's why he says that i wish you could be like little children because of the simplicity of their mind they understand what they need to understand they understand what they need to understand he says come don't be like you know some of us he says be like little children the older you get the more you are complicating things even the things of the lord you think that oh can i really i have a drinking problem can it really be solved or should i just manage it and god will understand i have a jealousy problem can it be solved he's saying that he's got a solution for you you're looking at the wrong place set your mind on the things that are above hallelujah the devil has lied to some of us that we, our situation is beyond reprieve he has lied that you have to manage your depression that you have to manage your your, your temper you have to manage your bad decision making you have to manage your sadness He's saying that you are you you are destined to a life of of no friends. You are destined to a life of loneliness. Say to me you are a liar in Jesus name. God did not create me put me on this earth to suffer. To be lonely. To live a sad life. The only suffering that we want is one that comes from our <laughs> Our, that cross that we are carrying 
That is the only suffering we are willing to accept. One that the, like, like the one that the disciples, the apostles said, they would come and say, wow. They would almost brag in their suffering. They were almost proud because they knew that it is because of their faith and what they were doing. It was not because it was ingrained symptoms that they were failing to manage. It had been dealt with. Hallelujah. Peter got dealt with. When Jesus said to him, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom, it's because he saw him and he said, you, you need to look above. You are a bit too quick. You're too eager. You want to solve things here by pulling out your knife and cutting people's ears off. You are too carnal. You will not survive where I'm sending you. I need to give you the keys to the kingdom. I need to tell you that you need to bind certain things in you. This fear that is causing you to deny me. Three times. Jesus was seeing that and he was saying that I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. You bind that, you bind that. You lose this, you lose that. And then go out and see what happens. The Peter that we see when the revival was happening is not the same one that was pulling out his mache. It's not the same one that they said, Do you, are you with Jesus? And he was running around saying, no, it's not me. This is the same man that stood and preached and thousands of people came to Christ. The same man that was persecuted and even lost his life as a martyr. Same man. And God is saying to you that he's giving you the keys. Hallelujah. You do not manage, you will not manage the things that the enemy has put in your life. You will overcome them. You are more than a conqueror. Set your mind. Brethren, we are going to do a lot of things that God is going to allow us to do in Fountain Church. Plug in. Because these things, they are all designed to help us to set our minds on the things above. Hallelujah. Let your children be available for the youth. Let your children be available for the children. Worship team, just come up. Let your children be available for everything that we are trying to do to help them to set their minds. Hallelujah. You know, men, be available to the fellowship of the brothers. I missed Monday's one. It wasn't recorded. I was so sad. You know, I was looking forward. I, I went on the Zoom and I was looking for the recording. When I miss a fellowship on Monday, I feel like I, I, I've missed something serious. If you are a man in this place, on Mondays, men, we come together to help each other set our minds on things above. If you are a lady, come together with the ladies every other Friday. Be involved in Oasis groups. You know, Young adults, we are gonna, we keep saying, but we are gonna put something more of a regular fellowship together so that we can all together set our minds on the things above. Hallelujah. Correct one another. Iron sharpening iron. We are not victims here. Fountain Church is not a church of victims. It is one of victors. It is one of people that have set their minds on the things that are above that will tell the enemy where to go and will live lives of victory. Hallelujah. We are going to baptize our sisters. And they are doing what they are doing because they've decided to set their minds on things above. As we sing this song, may I invite you to pray for LJ, Jen and Brianna. Wonderful, wonderful, young ladies who have decided to make a huge step in their life and that the old mindset will remain in there and as they come out as new people resurrected with Christ that they will find themselves with a new mindset in Jesus name hallelujah this is a powerful and amazing time that we are going to witness father lord we thank you Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for you have, you are speaking to us. You're speaking to me. You're speaking to my brothers and sisters. Lord, we set our minds on the things above. We refuse to metamorpho. We refuse to conform to the pattern of this world. The way people do things, the world is even now trying to push us to do things the way they do them. Lord, we refuse and we say we are not conforming. We are non-conformist. 
in the name of Jesus. We are non-conformist in the name of Jesus. And we set our minds on things above. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching this sermon. I hope you are blessed. Please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so that you can receive notifications when other videos are uploaded. God bless you. I hope to see you soon.